What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and today we'll be doing my first official countdown. Yeah, I've done countdowns before, but they were pretty eh and low effort. So I'll count this one as my first one. Anyways, me and my family are all Christian, and growing up my parents were very strict about what kind of shows we could watch. Luckily though, stuff on Nickelodeon seemed to be A-OK, -okay, so that's what we'll be counting down today. My top 5 personal best Nickelodeon cartoons. Now remember, that this is my opinion. If there's a show you like that I didn't put on here, be sure to let me know about it in the comment section below. Just don't start a riot. Besides, my list is likely going to be a lot different from a lot of yours anyways, considering I was born in the late 90s and didn't grow up with shows like Hey Arnold or Rocko's Modern Life at an age where I could properly appreciate them or have nostalgia for them. So when I eventually did see them, they didn't leave as much of an impression on me. But despite this, I hope you enjoy my list and respect my choices. Let's begin. The Fairly Odd Parents, or the Timmy Turner Show as I used to call it when I was a kid. Did anyone else ever do that when they were younger? Just not remembering this show's title despite it being on screen, in the theme song, and on the TV guide so instead you just call it by the main character's first name? Yeah, it's pretty obvious I was a dumb kid. But dumb or not, I was still able to enjoy this show. From the unique style before it was reused in every other Butch Hartman cartoon, to the interesting concept, I just loved it. To me, it was the first example I got of proper and interesting world building. You had the human world, the fairy world, and all these rules for the worlds coexisting. The rules for making wishes were interesting, I like how they explained bad luck in Friday the 13th with anti-fairies, I like how they explained pixies, the tooth fairy, holiday characters, and even genies. It was one of the most creative shows in my opinion, and I still enjoy watching the show. The first few seasons of the show, that is. Yeah, I guess they just ran out of ideas real fast and decided to just toss in boring and dumb new characters while the ones we already had got even more boring and dumb. Yup. Unfortunately, the Fairly Odd Parents got a case of the Spongebobs, where it just kept going and going. And that's why as much as I like it, this show gets placed down at number 5. The creator Butch Hartman has left Nickelodeon, so this could be the end of the road for Fairly Odd Parents, but whether it continues or not, it'll still hold a special place in my childhood. The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, or as I used to call it, Jimmy Neutron. Not because I couldn't remember the title of the show this time, but because it was a dang mouthful. This show was definitely a huge part of my childhood. It was the very first time I had seen 3D animation for a TV show. I had previously believed it was only something they did in Pixar movies. And while Jimmy Neutron didn't have the most visually appealing 3D animation, it still blew me away. Not only that, but the characters were incredibly memorable. Jimmy and his Donkey Kong hair, Sheen and his love for everything geeky, and Carl with his many health conditions. Not only that, but this cartoon helped young me realize that girl characters can be more than just girls. Cindy was cool. She was mean. She knew how to fight. She had an attitude. And her friend Livy also had a fun personality of her own. She was the level-headed one who kept Cindy in check when she got a little too mean. And she knew how to handle Jimmy when he got too big-headed and all Cindy could do to knock him off his high horse was yell. This show also had one of the most fun supporting casts I've ever seen in a cartoon. There's Bulby, the many iconic villains like Finbar Calamitous, and of course Jimmy's dad who just completely steals the show. Moments like Donut Boy or his abuse of Jimmy's rewind remote are just too funny to leave me with a straight face. Speaking of Jimmy's dad abusing his inventions, I also like the fact that Jimmy's genius wasn't a secret in the show. He didn't have to hide anything from his parents like Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory would. It just opened up a whole new realm of story possibilities to have his intelligence be public. The only thing keeping this from being higher on the list is that I just like the other shows more. So Jimmy Neutron gets number 4. You know, some people struggle through their childhood when they share the same name as a fictional character, the constant teasing and all that, and you'd think that it wouldn't be a problem for me considering my real name is Matt, and there aren't really any popular cartoon Matts. Well, just imagine sharing the same obscure hair color as a cartoon character's. With my albinism which caused Snow White hair, I was called everything. Santa Claus, Jack Frost, Blue Eyes White Dragon, and of course, Danny Phantom. Don't get me wrong though, despite all the teasing and being made fun of, I love this show to death. There weren't a lot of shows I watched with family members when growing up as none of us seemed to share interests. Pretty sad to be honest. However, both me and my sister heavily enjoy sitting down to watch some Danny Phantom. Even years later we occasionally binge several episodes. And why wouldn't we? It's an incredible show. 
Danny Phantom stars a young teenager with ghost powers and his daily struggle to balance his social life and superhero life. It sounds pretty standard and basic, but the way it kept continuity made it very unique. I hadn't seen anything like it before at the time. Watching Danny grow and get stronger every episode was so addicting for little 8 year old me. I remember the hypest moments being whenever Danny would gain a new ability like his ghostly whale or even his ice breath. And who could forget the many memorable villains that would stick with us for two amazing seasons before being nearly absent in the final season in favor of random one dimensional monster of the week villains. Yeah, even with my nostalgia goggles on for this show, the final season does still bug me. But that doesn't mean it's bad, just not as good as the first two seasons. Either way, flaws and all, Danny Phantom still deserves the number three spot on my list. Now, if you thought Danny Phantom's storytelling and continuity blew me away, then an even more advanced version of that, plus the breathtaking animation of Avatar The Last Airbender, had my jaw on the floor. It was my very first exposure to the anime style. Yes, notice how I said anime style, and not just anime. Don't get your panties in a twist in the comments, I never called it an anime. Anyways, in a world where some humans have the power to control an element of either fire, water, earth, or air, one child called the Avatar has control over all four. He must grow as a person and learn how to master each element so he can fulfill his destiny and save the world from war. This was one of the very first times I felt raw emotion from a cartoon. The characters would get depressed, they'd lose hope at some points, yet they kept going and managed to make things work out. I think this cartoon is where I realized as a kid that animation could be so much more than just moving drawings. They were creating stories and adventures for us to go on with the characters. I'd love to ride Appa with Aang, watch Katara practice her waterbending, or even just chill out with Sokka. And hey, maybe Toph can even teach me how to earthbend. I can barely see as it is, so that seismic sense would come in handy. This is one of the very rare times where a cartoon would be excellent all the way through. I can't think of a single bad episode. I mean, yeah, there was the Great Divide, but that was only bad by Avatar standards. It wasn't bad in general. It seemed like nothing could put a stain on the legacy of Avatar. Until Korra came out, but that's for another time. No matter what happens with the franchise in the future, we know that Avatar had an incredible story we all never knew we wanted to hear until we got it. And admit it, we all pretended that we had bending powers. I was an earthbender. Let me know what bender you pretended to be down in the comment section below. Before we get to number one, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you don't miss any future countdowns or reviews. Also, down in the description below are links to my Twitter and Discord. We can hang out and you can give me ideas for future videos. Now, without further ado, let's get to number one. Ah yes, Invader Zim. The I can't believe they put that on a kids network show. So dark. So edgy, and I loved every last dang episode of it! And it's weird, because this is the only cartoon on this list that I didn't grow up with. Most of it came and went from 2001 to 2002 when I was 4 to 5 years old. It was gone so fast that I never got a chance to see it. In fact, I don't think I had ever caught any promos for it either. The first time I discovered it was when my edgy friend introduced me to a store called Hot Topic. And Zim's face was everywhere. Funnily enough, that very same night we hung out at the place, Invader Zim had come back to Nicktoon's network after several years without a single mention of him. And of course, I sat down to watch it, curious at what made this little guy so special. And wouldn't you know it, the first episode I caught happened to be the one that the fanbase labeled as the darkest. Dark Harvest. In this episode, there was little to no humor. Just a mad rampage of Zim crawling around school and stealing organs from his fellow students. I was definitely disturbed. Just the thought of having one of my organs stolen and replaced with a random everyday object made me pretty squeamish. Yet I loved it! A cartoon had never really disturbed me like Zim could, and I guess it impressed me. It wasn't pure edge like I first thought. It wasn't being gross or risky just for the sake of being gross or risky. It was the twisted mind of the show's creator, Jonan Vasquez, being poured out into a cartoon. From the jokes, to the tone, to even the art style, which happens to be one of my biggest art inspirations to this very day, Zim was a one-of-a-kind show. The nostalgia I have for the show with how me and my friends would constantly watch and reference it to how it influenced my own art style today makes Invader Zim deserve the number one spot on my top five best Nickelodeon cartoons. 